In this opening chapter, we will talk about the importance of finding inspiration and gathering reference before starting production on any 3D artwork. Next, I will show you how to import and view images in 3ds Max, where I will get started on concept modeling low polygon versions of my Viking Shield and X. Before we get started, I wanted to remind viewers I am only releasing a limited selection of this course's 26 video tutorial chapters for free. If you would like to get the full class containing over 9 hours of recorded content and production-ready 3D models, it is available for only $7.99 and can be found on Gumroad by clicking the yellow button on the screen below. Or, if you have a Steam account, you can find a link to my Steam store page in the YouTube video description associated with this video. So here's the image that inspired me to create the 3D piece, and this was done by an amazing concept artist who's also a good friend of mine named Mark Gibbons. And he and I worked together for quite a while at Blizzard Entertainment. He did a lot of awesome stuff for World of Warcraft, and in fact, if you want to see more of his stuff, you can check out more of his artwork on Facebook if you search under MG Artworks. This will take you to his Facebook artist page, and he has a number of really cool images through here you can just flip through. Some of it's old school stuff, some of it's a little bit newer, um, but he has quite a few different things through there. So be sure to check that out and you'll see lots of really cool inspiring stuff. Um, and the other thing, you know, this is kind of silly. I thought you guys might enjoy seeing this. This is a picture of us recently from an event called Krampus Fest, and uh, Mark is one of the evil Krampus come to punish people who have been bad that aren't going to get gifts at Christmas. So yeah, that's us. I'm the scared little lederhosen boy. So, you know, outside of doing art, we do have fun on the side as well. Um, so the thing that I loved about this image is the composition was just very bold. It's simple, but it reads really well. I love centrally focal, uh, focused compositions. I, I don't know. It's just super fun. It, it's right there. The angles, everything flow really nicely. So Mark was totally cool with me using this, making it one-to-one, -one, or even just using it as inspiration. So what I want to do is uh, use a lot of things that he's done in here. For example, the banner up here, I'll probably literally use this one-to-one, -one, uh, but change the same from barbarian to something uh, maybe more... Uh, Viking-esque. And the other elements, um, what I'm going to end up doing is go a little bit more historically accurate. So for example, the shield here, uh, this wouldn't have been your typical Viking shield. So as I always do when I get ready to start projects, I gather tons of reference. So what you're seeing here are going to be some collections of my top choice images, and I actually have maybe 10 times more images than this, and then I narrow it down. So as you can see in here, uh, the, most of the Viking shields that they actually had were round, and that's because they could uh, go shoulder to shoulder and form shield walls with these. I have a center emblem here that you can also use as a weapon to smash against someone's face. And uh, the symbol over here is um, a symbol for Odin. I'll probably incorporate that into the shield somehow. And these images, if you guys haven't seen the TV show on the History Channel, it's from a TV show called Vikings. It is awesome. Check it out. The next thing I'm going to do is, I really like his axe, and although it's maybe not 100% historically accurate, I'll probably keep what he's got going on here, but instead of just having a plane, I'm going to add some type of interesting um, Norse-looking tribal art on the inlay here. I'm, I'll probably use that in a couple different places. And maybe on this side, instead of having an axe, if it looks good with the composition, I might drop a sword in here. So for axes, again, I found some reference uh, from the Viking TV show. This is one of the axes that they use. I think this is an actual uh, replica that you can buy. And then on the right here, I think this is another replica of an axe, but it shows some of the really cool Norse um, designs. And on the bottom left, you have an actual um, axe head that was found at an archaeological site that has some beautiful inlays that were etched into the blade. So I want to do that kind of decorative inlay that I will do once I get to ZBrush. Um, sword, if I can get a sword in there, I will do it if I have time. And this one I think would be particularly cool to use because it's called a Trondheim sword. And the Trondheim sword was a famous sword that was created in the city of Trondheim, um, a style that they created and manufactured there. And since I'm giving this presentation in Trondheim, Norway, um, I hope that they'll recognize this and think it's kind of like a cool little goodie to see that I did something that's um, historically accurate to their town. And if I put that in there, that'll probably kind of go from left to right here. 
Uh, finally, the helmet. Um, I love the horn helmet that he have, has here. Unfortunately, that's not historically accurate. Most Vikings did not have the horn helmets because they could be uh, pulled off in battle and used against you. You know, someone could just hook it with an axe and pull it down. But I think it's cool, so I'm going to put a horn and uh, horns on my helmet as well. But looking here, again, I've gathered some reference. Uh, I'll probably go kind of this um, more stylized, uh, tribal art looking helmet with the nose guards. I might incorporate Thor's hammer into the design somehow. And uh, over here you can see some other reference images from the movie Pathfinder here and here. I think the horns here are really cool. Um, and then Conan, I believe that's what that was from. And I may even put a plume on the top of mine because uh, I think it's kind of cool. And um, also I want to learn how to do hair and Max and maybe ZBrush, which surprisingly I haven't really done too much. So yeah, that's uh, about it. Um, let's go ahead and show you how we can get some of these images into Max and get started on our 3D. The first thing I'm going to want to do in Max is to get these images that I've just been showing you onto some planes in the scene so that I can use them for reference. So over here in 3D Studio Max, I'm using Max 2015. Um, just in my front view here, the first thing I'm going to do is come and create a plane. And I'm going to turn on the snaps toggle, right click this, and then check and make sure that the grid points is locked on. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to drag out a plane right here from the very center point of the grid in the universe. And uh, now also too, I want to make sure that it stays <clears throat> right in the middle. So if you hold down control as you're doing this, now you'll see that it's stuck right in the middle. And I know that image of the Viking uh, head the concept that Mark did is square. So I just control drag that out and um, now we should have a completely square object 180 by 180 and uh, I just now hit Alt and Middle Mouse Rotate to go to an orthographic view just to make sure that's correct. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my Material Editor and let's find that image. I'm just going to take a standard thing here, um, Diffuse, Bitmap, click that. Let's find that image, Mark, Viking, and I'm going to assign that material to the selection and then I'm also going to show Shaded Material in Viewport. And by the way, um, I usually use hotkeys with Max, but for this demo, I'm just going to use the default settings. So now we have this in here. Um, hotkey by default to hide the grid is G, so I'm going to hit that. And I like this. This is centered in world space. And I think that the uh, reason this is good is because later I'm going to continue making objects off of this center uh, pivot. And since we'll be able to use symmetry a lot later once we get into ZBrush, it's really important to keep everything centered here. And um, create all the objects. So uh, next thing I want to do is get some of those other images in that we created. <clears throat> so I'm just going to drag this over. I'm going to turn off my snaps toggle and move this one over. Uh, let's do a copy of that. And if you remember in Photoshop some of the other images were slightly different diameters. Um, so this one, uh, Viking Helmets. Um, by the way, while we're in Photoshop, I want to show you kind of a cool feature. If you go to your uh, magnify mode and you use the alt key and then you left click and slide you can kind of zoom in gradually I know some people don't realize you can do that it's kind of a cool thing to do so what I want to do is look at the image aspect ratio of this so we have 2871 by 1500 and we're gonna match that in max for this plane um, 2871 2871 and this top one um, what did we say? I think it was 1800. Let's just check that again, make sure that's correct. Ah, 1500. So 2871 by 1500. And now we have kind of the correct dimension. Uh, I'm just going to add a point into each of these just so that it gets smaller like the other side um, that I had a second ago. So 28 point 287.1 and 150. Uh, so again, let's come in here, pick a bitmap. And in this case, we were just looking at the Viking helmets and assign that material and this in. Now we have that image in here that we can use for reference. You'll notice that this is a little bit distorted right now. Um, it's not as high resolution as it could be. 
and that's because we need to change some display settings. So let me show you how to do that. So let's minimize our material editor and up here under the orthographic shaded and edge faces, just basically in your view, viewport, if you click this plus sign down here, go to configure viewports, go to display performance. And under here by default, you'll see your texture maps is set to 512. Uh, increase this to something like 496 and hit uh, apply. Okay, um, you'll notice nothing happens right away. It's because we need to reload the image. So let's click reload and now watch. Okay, cool. Now we got the resolution that we want. Let's just make sure that the uh, barbarian, barbarian here has that as well, which it doesn't look like it does. So we reload and now we're in good shape. Now, if you go to a different viewport, you might have to hit that again. So just be aware. But yeah, all it is is plus this, configure viewports, and then display performance and adjust your texture map setting. So let's go ahead and get our other planes in here as well. Um, as we're doing this, I'm just going to name these things. I always like to keep things organized. Helmet plane, uh, concept plane. These other ones, the helmets and whatnot, I am not too worried about having them in the center of world space right now, so I'm just kind of moving them off the side and getting them in here. So shift and drag so that we can clone that, make a copy, and let's call this one uh, shield plane. And again, let's go back to Photoshop and check out what the settings we had here were. Uh, 1936 by 905. And again, I'm just going to move uh, decibel here. And again, let's go ahead and find the map for that. Cool, that looks good. I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. And we'll do the same for the other planes as well. And now I'm just speeding up the recording, repeating this over and over so that I can get all five reference images into my scene. And next thing I'm gonna do is just quickly create a layer for these. So right now they're all under default layer. I'm gonna grab them all and hit this create new layer button. And for the new layer, I'm just gonna call it um, images. And then that way I can uh, hide this later if I don't need it anymore. So yeah, now we have a good starting point. We got all of our images and our scene that we're gonna wanna use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. First, I'm gonna make a new layer, and this is gonna be where all my 3D stuff's gonna go into. So, click this button again. This one I'll call, oh, let's just call this shield, since I'm gonna start with my shield first. And since I have that highlighted, anything that I create new will be placed in here. Since I'm gonna be doing the shield, I'll move some of these over, because um, I wanna have this for reference as I'm creating it in my scene. And I'm gonna press F4 so that I can hide the wireframe on my non-selected objects and zoom in here to the middle of the barbarian piece. And since the shield looks to me just like it's a um, flat cylinder, that's what I'm gonna start with. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the importance of the symmetry for using this later max, I'm gonna go ahead and start it at the middle of world space at zero, zero, zero coordinates. And by doing that with the snaps toggle, so come over here, standard primitives, let's click on cylinder, drag that out, and we'll have it just go up a little bit, turn off the snap, and I'm gonna rotate around that. Let's turn on our angle snap toggle. And now we have this situated in world space. I think this is probably gonna be a little bit too thick, and honestly, all I want is one of the front planes of this because I'm gonna end up doing my own extrusions later. So I'm gonna turn this into an editable poly by right clicking that. I'm gonna select this front face and then I'm gonna shift click to invert the selection and delete the remaining polygons. 
And then now we just have this one uh, polygon in the center that can represent our shield. All right, this part's getting sped up because as I do with many of my projects, I decided to make some changes later in the process that will make a better looking shield that's going to work for the practical purpose of this project a little better. But what you're seeing here is originally I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to uh, make everything out of a cylinder, do some stuff with like polygon inset tools, and then actually taking a sphere, snapping it to the center to do the emboss. And I will use that sphere later, but some of the other stuff I'm doing here I won't use. So for example, um, the parts with the metal and whatnot, I was extruding out uh, from the middle and the back. And I thought I was going to use those originally. I decided I'm not going to. But I think it's good for you guys to see this because um, you know these projects don't go perfectly and you make a lot of changes during the process and whenever you want to um, refine your design. Things like that. Now I'm going to block out the basic X, and so I'm going to unhide everything in my scene, hide the planes that I don't need, move this barbarian piece back a little bit, scale that up to kind of simulate the X size I'm going to want. I think as a composition, this will probably look pretty good. Just play with that until I'm happy with the size. I probably need to make this more slender so that it fits a little nicer, but that's totally fine. I'm actually going to hide this, and make a new layer, call it Axe. And I'm going to come here, I'm actually going to duplicate this. All right, I'm going to take this plane and I'm going to rotate this a bit so it almost feels like a straight up and down. Just kind of cheating some stuff so that it makes it easier for me when I'm making uh, my axe. delete the bottom of this polygon because it just makes it a lot easier to select the border and then shift and drag down for the different segments of the axe handle that I want. I'm just going to come all the way down right here and right click on this object properties and let's make this 0.5 visibility so I can see through this a bit. I think the actual axe handle should be a little bit smaller. And then we'll make some of the other parts a little bit thicker here. So again, just speeding up through this process of creating the axe. I'm moving things around to find the basic shape and then I'll slow down here and then show you how I use the connect tool to determine how many edges I want in the center because I'm going to make this little metal band that's on the concept. So I'm just going to start pushing and pulling my verts around here to work with the design of that little band. And at this point I'm not using any edge constraints, I just am moving this freely. 
then I do switch to edge constraints. This is really useful. Um, so it's getting that lined up fairly close to what the concept would be. Now, you know, I know this doesn't match perfectly. It's not super accurate, but it's more of a comic feel. If I was doing this thing for real, I, I might not just be tracing over a handle like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is clone this. And the reason why is I want that metal band to be able to become a separate material pretty easily. So I'm just selecting the pieces now on my cloned object that would be the metal band. And then uh, I'm inver inverting my selection by select dragging over top of that. And now I've got just the band on here. I'm centering my pivot point to this. And now I go into the extrude mode, but if you just do it by default, it's not going to go the way you want it to go. So if you click the box and then you want to set this to group normal or local normal, then it'll actually go out based on the normals. And that looks pretty good to me. And I'll do the same thing up here at the top of the X. The other thing I did here at the top of the X is I extruded in on the metal hinges so that I kind of have it so it'll feel like it's socketed into the X. And the next part I'm doing is I'm just doing that same thing where I copy and make a new version of the mesh, a clone of it, and I'll be creating the X head this time. So the process is generally the same, but I'm going to do a couple different things here. I'm going to end up working in a symmetry mode. So what you see me doing here is I'm cutting what's going to become the blade of the axe. And I'm just deleting unnecessary polygons. And from this edge, I'll select these and then I'll just be shift, drag, clicking so that I can extrude the edges and then start making the blade of the axe. And as you know, those have to come to a point. So here at this top portion, I'll keep it a, a little bit thicker and then as I get further down the blade, I'll make it sharper and sharper. And I constantly go back and forth in my top view so I can bring it in tighter where the blade needs to become sharp. And then also move my vertices around so that it's gradually coming to a sharp cut. Uh, as you can see here, otherwise it would be kind of um, bended in a weird way. So the next thing I did was add a symmetry modifier onto this and then I'm just going through and making some adjustments. And once I'm happy with the symmetry, now what I'm going to do is collapse that symmetry and then start selecting edges and connect this together using the bridge tool. So I'm just connecting the edges that I want to have polygons extrude from and connect to one another. And you simply just click the bridge button and then you've got polygons in the center. And now I'll go to uh, um, edge border mode, find that little hole right here, and I can tap that. Now in hindsight, I think you could probably go through and select all of these edges and connect them all at once with a bridge. I've had some stuff in the past where I need to leave one little space between spans so that I don't get strange geometry, so that's why you see what I'm doing there. However, I'm pretty confident that I could have taken that whole thing and selected all the edges or even just the edge boundary and hit bridge and it would have worked perfectly. And then what I'm doing here is just adding some additional geometry for the axe head and rounding some things out because the concept has those little edges to the axe head holder here that look kind of cool. So I want to make sure those come out. And I'm actually bringing that down a bit because later in the zero sculpt I'll try and give it a little bit of room so it looks as if the wooden handle could fit inside there and that might create a nice little shadow or some ambient occlusion. Next thing I'm going to do that I'm feeling pretty good about the axe is just assign some basic colors to it, wood for the handle, something gray for the metal, and 
Now look at our original composition. I'll move my axe around, make sure that works with the shield. But the thing that I kind of find here pretty quickly is now my shield looks way too small. This axe looks like a giant ogre axe or something. So uniformly scaling this down and I'll just solve that by trying to make this handle a little bit longer and thinner. This feels a little bit more realistic to me. Now, in a minute here, I'm going to show you how I recreated my shield. And as I'm doing that, probably at the end, I'm, I'm willing to bet I might have to adjust the scale of the axe again. So we'll see what happens. But for now, this will work for you for the axe. And let's go back to our shield. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like to see more of my personal and professional art, please check out my Facebook artist page by searching for Art of Seth Thompson in Facebook. I also have an Instagram where I post daily about my art and various adventures like surfing. You can find me there by searching for Seth Thompson Art. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to bringing you more excellent content soon.